right, now we're good. And we're live. All right, we're the Lucky 13 Podcast. Um, with me, Jeff. <laughs> you, did you forget your name yeah. for a minute? And we got a very special guest, Sean Pierce here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Purple didn't make it today. Yeah, Purple didn't make it. So we, we're Melody. She's taking a pole saying. class. Yeah. Um, so we got Sean here from the Toilet Boys. And tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Sean, for the yeah. people at home that don't know you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> wow. Hey, you know what? It's like, I feel like I'm at the office. Like every Thursday night, I come here to Lucky 13. I see you guys smiling faces. It's like cheers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Thursday, Thursday's <laughs> definitely your night. I love it. Thirsty Thursdays. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I was in a band for a while, the Toilet Boys. We, you know, I don't know, New York weirdos, just uh, a bunch of fire and rock and roll and Punk, fucking and weirdos. When did and you? Madness. When did you um, form? Uh, well, they were a band when I moved to New York. Okay, from okay. where? I moved from Delaware. Okay. Yeah, my my, my story starts in Delaware. Shit was <laughs> creepy in Delaware, <laughs> and uh, and so like I started out like in a hardcore band in Delaware when I was like a kid. Um, when I was twelve, I got to meet the Ramones. My mom took me to see the Ramones in Ocean City, Maryland, and that was it. Boom! Aww. Twelve years old, I was like, met Johnny. I saw I saw Joey Ramone and Johnny Ramone driving go karts before their gig. Shut the fuck up! I swear, to you, there's a picture. There's a That's picture. That's amazing. Uh, like on my Instagram, go to my Instagram account. You see all the weird shit that I that I do these days. Like yeah, animation. it's Cult of Sean Pierce for yeah. those of you. Yeah. yeah, so you can keep up with this podcast for the <laughs> listeners at home. <laughs> uh, the visual, but there's there's this picture of me at like 12, me and Johnny Ramon, and it was like life changing because they were so cool. And my mom was like, she's just like a you know mom mom. She's like, oh hi, nice to meet you. My son's a big fan. And they wouldn't let me in. It was a bar, but they were like, come on, mom, you guys got to come to the show. Yeah. And the Ramones like basically took my mom into the show, and then they uh, Dee Dee snuck me a beer backstage. <laughs> Like I was standing outside the club, my mom was in the club. It was it was awesome. It was amazing, and like uh, just it was just weird hanging out with Johnny Ramone, uh, Johnny Ramone, and then Joey for a while talking about music at twelve was yeah. very weird because I just kept being like, uh, you know, Black Flag. I just kept met saying band names. He was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, and then uh, it was very cool to like later on with the Toilet Boys actually go tour with those guys and and have a you know. Like a, a relationship with them. Did you remind them of your twelve-year-old self? Oh my God! I was like, just I fanboyed out. Of course, we. Uh, it was. I think it was Joey's fiftieth birthday. We got to back him up as we were like Toilet Boys were Ramones for a night. It was a dream come true. We did like five or six songs. With awesome. Joey singing. So wow, yeah, that's fucking cool. It was very cool. And then we got to tour with Dee Dee and, and Marky in a bit. They they were doing something called the Remains. So they would go out and play uh, Ramon songs. So and that was another dream come true being on the road with Didi Ramon, who's that guy, he's like my uh, that's my Ramon. That dude is such a that's your, that's yeah. your Ramon. Yeah, me and Didi like instantly <laughs> bonded, and I think we also had the you know like the whole sex business going on and all like the there was a lot for us to bond on. And I think Didi got a big kick out of the Toilet Boys. So and me and Didi. Uh, you know, like we had a lot of similar interests on the road, and right. you know, um, I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> it, was, it was very fun, uh, and uh, yeah. So that on that little tour, he bought a new guitar every night. That was the big fun. Every weird, every night. Every night, it was the weird DD story for me. Every night he would show up and be like, "Sean, I bought another guitar. <laughs> I bought the. I, I, I wasn't liking that last one. I kept being like, "What are you talking about, dude?" And he'd just play and be like, "What do you think of this one?" And I'm like, "It's fine, DD. It was just like the one you had last night." <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, he's, he's a trip, dude. Uh, as a sound check, here was a, our, our, our bass player, Adam's a ventriloquist, right? He's a magician. Shut he's up. He's awesome. Adam, uh, a Cardone from the Toilet Boys, he's like a, uh, a reverend in the Church of Satan. He's like all the way up the ranks in the Church of Satan at this point. And he's a professional magician, like a true, a true warlock. And uh, and he's a great ventriloquist. So he brought his 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 uh, doll on the road on that tour. <laughs> and so there's like, what does this, it look like? Is it like that it movie Magic? Mini, no, he made it. It's a mini him. It's a mini you him. And, and and at the time he was like married, and you know he couldn't mess around. But the doll would say the craziest shit to girls. <laughs> and it's amazing when you watch someone interact with a a doll, like yeah, a ventriloquist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. there, he would say the craziest shit, and like they're getting. A, 
getting you know upset at the dial and not him. Right, right. <laughs> and which which brings me to the Didi thing because Didi, you know, the dude was like he was he would operate in this weird like you know like a five year old. It was like hanging out with like a really cool kid. Kid, right, right, yeah. Right. And I, like, I met, I met I, Didi once. He struck me that say, way. Like when you were talking to him at, to, as a twelve year old, that you guys were on the same level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it was yes, like as, as a twelve, whatever. I I don't know, like yeah. d- d- just the the time that the brief time I got to know DD and like ha- I luckily got to hang with him a couple you know like just in a tight cool way like right, we, we right, bonded right. and uh it was very yeah it was amazing he constantly amazed me at at the thing you know like it was like hanging out with a kid right, right but right. the way he reacted to this <laughs> to this uh ventriloquist doll was amazing like he's holding full conversations with the with doll it. yeah yes. <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden like it took a bad turn like the doll got evil to him and then <laughs> he's like i don't like get this doll away from me and he freaks out and like and then he hated our bass player from then on uh, so, no. to the point where we're sound checking this one so so <laughs> it's his band on stage sound checking and me and the bass player yeah. are standing there watching and it was you know awesome getting to see him sound check and he's like and all of a sudden he stops they stop a the song and he goes someone in this room is very annoying to me right now <laughs> and so me and Adam look at each other and I'm like like so both of us were just kind of I'm like it's not me like it's, we're kind of, and so we just both walked away and, uh, you know. fantastic but, dude did you ever get to see, it, it, seeing D, just DD play was the best part was he would stop songs constantly like middle of the song yeah, I never saw him so I saw the Ramones a couple times but I never got to see DD himself so. it was because he's doing all the Ramones stuff but right. he'd yeah. just be like stop stop I, that was terrible okay from the beginning like he'd restart songs oh, it was fucking just, great it was fucking awesome man it was I truly loved you know, yeah, 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 that experience. You know, that's fucking wild. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it's funny too because I've seen like old clips of just the Ramones arguing on stage. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Which is oh, fucking yeah. great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Great in itself. So yeah. I can. I imagine saw them eight million it. times. Yeah. I used to play a Lamore constantly, constantly. Oh, you were a Lamore's girl. I was a Lamore. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. My so. wife was like the tales of Lamore's. That was I got to go to the. Remember they reopened Lamar's? Yeah, later. Late? Yeah. yeah, I saw yeah. Motorhead there, and it was. It, I gotta say, it was very lackluster as right. far as my Lamar's experience. Right. Yeah, you know? it was shitty when they reopened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. weird. But the the. I mean, when I was going, I was sixteen to get in, and I was definitely fourteen, and no one gave a fuck, and I could easily get a drink, and definitely Chris Holmes from Wasp was running around with me on his shoulders, feeding me alcohol and yeah. shit. So I actually, I actually <laughs> had a great experience at the new Lamore when the Lamore first opened. I got a blow job in the men's bathroom right. by a girl, yeah, <laughs> by an actual female. Wow, yeah. yeah. an dragged, actual female. I dragged this girl in the bathroom, and I got a blow job in the bathroom. It was great. W- yeah, what, were, what were you there for? I'm curious. To uh, cheat on his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Was that you at the time? It wasn't, thank God it wasn't, it wasn't me. It wasn't. I mean, he cheated on me, too. That's, That's why we're not though. together anymore. But. Oh, my God. Wow, let's get into it. Yeah. Like, so, that's what happened? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I'm such a fucking asshole. I gotta take my strings off. I'm you always been kind of curious. <laughs> oh, my God. That's yeah. funny. He's a real piece of shit, Wait, this did guy. You, you were already on the bar together. Oh, yeah. We what, opened what? the bar together. We were together. Yeah, yeah. you were together. Yeah. And yeah, we, were then, together. Oh, we were supposed to get married. Dude, I opened up the fucking oh, bar shit. at 30 years old. You know what I mean? Like, when we first opened up Lucky 13, I was 30 years old. And it wasn't really used to pussy getting thrown at me all the time. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like, you know? So there you <laughs> go. Just happens. happened to be with the girl that was behind the bar as the pussy's getting thrown at you. That's <laughs> tough, dude. Well, he was bartending, too. So on his nights bartending is when he was having the pussy thrown at him. And yes. I was still working a day job. And you time, had so. cocks yeah. being thrown at you well, and so everything what? Who else. Cares about I know. That? They're always I being thrown care. from everything. Yeah, I don't yeah, care about that. Different I'm scumbag. also a little older than Jack. Yeah. Piece of shit. Total piece of shit. It's kind of a fucked up, like, it's it's kind of, it's a fucked up story that I'll tell you off. Yeah, air. off, off okay, the air. Go, go, go. Uh, I'll tell it on the motherfucking air. I don't give a flying fuck. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll get into that later. Yeah, we'll it's never been. T- like, I was curious because I've listened, but I haven't listened to all of it. I yeah. was curious if the story. No, that's of never the- come no, up. It's never, come it's up. never it's been never, on. Because he doesn't, never he doesn't been like it. No, I have podcast. so many terrible things exactly. to say about Jeff. I try to <laughs> oh kind of keep God. it under well, control. Well, you know what? It's quite uh, uh, It's it's. Uh, I'm honored and, and happy that you guys have maintained it and kept yeah. the place together. I've I've certainly had magic moments here at Lucky Thirteen. I definitely thought to myself 
he was like, fucking buy me out. Well, I'm, I'm like, fucking buy me out. We have $5 to our name. Yeah. I threw him <laughs> you out. Know, he's I, fine, so like, like, you give yeah. me $15 yeah, like, and we're man. done. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I threw him out of our house so he was sleeping on his band studio floor so neither Oof. one of us had a fucking pot to piss in. Oh, yeah. So we, there was really no choice but to try to keep the business this going. This was literally like you guys had a baby together. Yes, oh, like that's, what I, always yeah. Say, yeah. <laughs> that's what I always say. Yeah, that's what I always say. But, you know, some fo- like we were talking about this before, like at one point it was fucked up because when I, you know, when you're behind the bar, you can't fucking leave. So, and sometimes she would come in the bar though when I was bar. Like usually, if I walked in, she'd be like, "Get the fuck out! I can't deal with you right After now." After we broke up, <laughs> yeah, I would tell him to get the fuck out. So I would, and I would like, or I would throw a pint glass, or I would, like, sit, or I would like sit in a corner and like not bother her. But she would come in and fucking start whipping pint glasses at me. I'd fucking I hated him. I wanted him to die. Yeah, we, we had a trap I wanted him door. to fucking die. We had a trap die. door behind the bar. So at one point, I remember one night, I fucking went down to the basement for a second. And I come back up and a bar stool comes flying down the fucking <laughs> stairs. I wanted to at, kill at him. Me. And then like, and I just, I said, I hope you have your keys on you because I'm fucking leaving. Yeah, and I, wanted, I just fucking I wanted out. to murder him. Yeah. Wow, man. I wanted to murder him. Oh, that's amazing. I, yeah. I'm really like, we are, I'm we proud got of you guys. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Over Somehow and, we got through that. And, and you got your kid into high school. Yeah, I, feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like there's colleges now. ahead of us. We're yeah. doing yeah. A, a, a block party festival. <laughs> yeah, 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 we yeah. can do it. Yeah. We're okay uh, now. Yeah, no, we I have it. <laughs> that, the fact that he lived through those couple years there, because yeah. we got back together and then he did it again, which is kind of <laughs> oh amazing that he's alive. Oh, I actually yeah. took him back and then he did it again. So yeah. not only did he did it do it again, but he <laughs> fucked the girl on my fucking bar with his friend, and I heard about. It the next oh. day. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, wow. So that yeah. was the second time I threw him out and he had to go sleep on the studio of his wow. band's rehearsal yeah. space. You're and hearing it right that. here in podcast You're hearing land, it right here in podcast and gentlemen. Land. It's all right. Whatever. It's, all, it's, all, it's, it's in the past. tale of Lucky 13. That, that was kind of awful. That, was, that one was fucking Pretty awful. drugs are bad. Yeah, drugs, <laughs> drugs, drugs are, are bad. bad. Drugs are bad. Drugs, drugs are, are bad. bad. <laughs> Jeff yeah. gets really fucked up and doesn't know what he's doing. Sometimes. Yeah, I was fine for most of the night, and then I did some drugs and whatever, and drank yeah, too much. Whatever, and, you know, shit he's happens. got no self control. <laughs> got no self control. I've gotten better yeah. now. I'm in my forties. Like I Thank have gotten self control. You're also not so cute anymore, so you have less women <laughs> well, throwing themselves at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when there's happen, less so. 22 year olds throwing themselves at you it's a little don't easier hold back, to control Louise. don't hold back <laughs> I don't think I've ever held back in my life I don't think so either she doesn't so, so oh, shit. We, had, we, we, we had a fucking we had quite a few rough years where it was like she was in the bar uh, and I was not like there was yeah there was quite a few I went sober for like a year because of all this drama it was so, bad yeah yo it was yeah, bad yeah it was bad but look we kept it together yeah. we did. not only kept yeah, it together we, we moved to a new location together was that in the midst that of it that was in the old spot it was in the old spot yeah it was all at the old spot yeah when, yeah, when we decided to kind of come over here we were on pretty good terms like yeah. um, you know we've had our ups and downs through the years oh yeah but now we're like family and it's just fucking you know we, <laughs> do, we, <laughs> we just do it you know what I mean uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we survived. Yeah, yeah, we did. We survived. We survived. So when I, when I met Jeff, I was actually working at Pandora's Box. So I wanted to talk to you. What's that? What's that about Pandora's I never, Box? I, I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is Pandora's Box? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You were working at Pandora's Box, and you used to call me sometimes from, from there. From there on a Wednesday Did night. Did you ever go visit her? Yeah, I never went no. to visit her. No, because it was funny though. Because at the time too, she was working at Pandora's Box, and I was. Uh, there was another place called the Den of Iniquity, yeah. and I used to do uh, I used to do like the construction there and stuff. Like if they needed shit built for them and stuff like that, <laughs> I would do I would do stuff there, which was kind of fucking funny. So, so yeah. you were trading for uh, sessions? No, I, yeah, I would, well, so it was funny all the carpenters for those places yeah. would always be oh, yeah. like, well, and that's and that's what was funny because like no, I wasn't trading for sessions, so it was you know it, it was a. Uh, um, you know, I wasn't trading for sessions, but at one point, I remember, like, I was, like, re-wrapping this, the fucking weirdest room in the place. It was, like, the toilet, like, it <laughs> the was, toilet like, room. the toilet, and, <laughs> the and, and like, room. all this kind of shit. And, like, they kept it really clean, but, like, this one table needed to be wrapped with, like, latex again or something. So do you think, like, do, do you have, do we have to explain to people listening? Yeah, what, like, is like, yeah like, we're talking about that. houses of domination. Yeah. I used to be a dominatrix, so that's what we're talking about. Yeah, so, so, you know, so, you know, there was the medical room, and then the toilet room and then the whatever rooms they yeah. had there, you know? So I remember at one point, though, like, I was wrapping this room in latex, this table with latex, and I had to 
like let them know whenever I was coming out of the room. Um, because, you know, they didn't want me to bump in there. <laughs> right, yeah. So I remember, like, I called I called the front desk. I said, listen, I'm coming out of the room. And uh, some other Dom was, like, coming down the hallway as I'm coming out of the room. And she yelled at me. She's like, get back in that room. What are you doing out of here? And I was like, yo, I'm actually getting paid to be yeah. here. <laughs> like, she thought it was a rogue slave. Yeah, yeah. 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 A slave rogue on the slave, run. Slave like, on the run. Back in there. And, well, once, and once in a while, they would give actually give me slaves to work in the rooms to, like, help paint or stuff oh like that. Oh, my God. And they were so fucking awful. They're always like, awful. They were, they were remember, awful. Remember my cigarette slave, Paul, that used to yes, clean the bathroom clean the at bathroom. the old Lucky 13? I used to have to call my bartender, listen, this guy's going to show up and he's going to take off all his clothes except his tidy whities and he's going to clean the men's room until it smells like lemons and just let him fucking do it. And I had to walk into this every fucking Wednesday or whatever day it was. <laughs> You're like, oh, another day at work. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's sending some fucking useless slave yeah, over. He used to, to attract those. Like Kevin Carpet showed up at the bar yeah, one time. Yeah, I, I still that attract them. That amazing. Huh? No. He used oh, we to, had like, to kick him out. Theo, I can't uh, take it. My wife, had, she used to throw a rated X to panty party, which every week, you know, if you wore your underwear, you get cheap drinks. So it attracted, like, it attracted, you know, normal hipster kids that wanted to have a good time. But then there was, like, that scattering of, like, the complete weirdo. fetish crowd. Yeah, like the yeah. one guy that would always just be naked with his work boots. And we're like, this is, like, supposed to be underwear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Can you like everybody put something else on? is, is yeah. fine with being in yeah. their underwear except yeah, yeah. this one dude that just, like, he'd always be smiling, the biggest smile. Yeah. And then the carpet dude would always show up. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, there's, and two, took... there's two carpet dudes. Oh, there's is actually there? two, yeah. Oh, they must hate each other. Yeah, there's two carpet dudes. They're, they're Kevin, Kevin for... is the one we know. We it, it, know. Would he go to parties and stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's probably the guy. And I did take joy one night i'm like oh because i almost tripped and broke my neck you know he's there and it's a crowded that's night. why He'd we threw him out of lucky door. 13 right. oh he used to call me <laughs> yeah, so, so at the, at the old place. yeah you almost trip and fuck it like this yeah. fucking fetish weirdo so you're you like do. dude so you know you know how big the old lucky 13 was yeah. i remember i walked into lucky 13 one night and i was walking up to the bar and i didn't see him he was like laying so if you don't know who this guy is he used to roll himself up in a carpet because he likes yeah, people yeah. to stand on yeah. him yeah. And, and and people could stand at the bar what happened to him when he was a fucking baby <laughs> so so fucking I remember I walked in and I almost tripped to go get a fucking drink and I just started fucking kicking him. Me too. I, 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 I was gonna say I kicked that dude in the head a couple times, yeah. dude, because I was like, you know what, fuck you, man. Like, yeah, I guess yeah. you're into it. Yeah, it dude, and it was so great because I remember like it was me and my friends and I'm just fucking kicking him, like, fuck you, get out of here. And he's dragging his carpet out the door at Lucky 13, like, fuck you guys, man. Yeah. You guys are fucking assholes. Oh my god. Yeah, man. like like Linus with his blanket. Yeah. Yeah, dragging yeah, it yeah. down the street. Yeah. Did, how about the guy? Did the guy that uh, he wanted people to ride him all the time? He would show up with a a, a, a ha- yeah yeah. Did, no, did he ever? No. no, he 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 wrote me a couple times to ask if he could come to Unique's fetish thing, and I'm oh, like, yeah, the yeah. car's too small for that. Really? Someone will get hurt. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, that. a guy used to show up with a saddle and yeah. like want the girls to ride to him. ride him. How about man? Do, you, do you, have you ever? Do, have you ever met Mangina by any chance? I have no. not. No. Oh my god. So so. When the internet first started, right, there was this place called Pseudo that uh, was down right on Broadway in Houston. And it was like the first guy to make live content for the internet. And it was back when there was dial up. So it was literally like a picture every 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, some show interviewed me and then they're like, dude, you, you should ha- take, have a show, you know, like have a, a like this online sh- show once a week. And so, uh, me and um, this chick Kate, who used to work at Pandora's Box, and Rick from the Toilet Boys had the show every week called Hot Box. And one of the <laughs> like we we interviewed really funny people. We had the Ramones, on, like all these band people on. Um, but we also had people like Smalley Polly, like the guy with the littlest dick in the world, <laughs> as per, and, and Jonah the Whale, the guy with the biggest dick in the, uh, the you know whatever. And uh, this other dude, Mangina, came in, and he w- he has w- one leg. Right. And the other leg is like this stump, like the, it's at his foot. It's like a stump that comes to a thing. So he has this fetish of like fucking men and stump. women with a stump. Right. And he also makes these plastic vaginas <laughs> and wears like a them. fleshlight. Yeah, like sort he of? would make them and wear them, and that was his whole trip. Like he would but go to clubs and perform, it? like everywhere, out <laughs> over top of like like oh, uh, like leggings and right. shit. But it was like. <laughs> 
it was fucking disturbing. This guy is like something and be like Silence of the Lambs, but you're like talking to him. He's just like a normal dude, but like then I'm like, okay, so you're a man giant. And I'm like, and, you know, it's basically like a podcast, but that's going out over yeah, the internet yeah, yeah. that no one's listening to or watching, but you know, they're paying us to do it. So anyway, like it was weird to get to interview these fucking people. Like, like, like in the sm- between Smalley Polly and Jonah the Whale with the dick sizes. Yeah, yeah. Did, you, got, did, did you, they show that you their dicks? I'm assuming. Oh, totally. Yeah. Joni used to go to parties all the time. He would wear these uh, he would wear these tight white biker shorts and just walk around standing with his fucking hog, just like hanging the fuck hanging out. Hanging, he yeah. would stand. It was creepy. We'd have to kick him out of various parties, <laughs> right. like in the late '90s and stuff. And uh, but but if you had to. If you ask me who was the happiest of the two, the most well adjusted. Smalley Totally, like yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Jonah the Whale was a freak, dude. <laughs> a freak. And you're just like, dude, what's wrong with you? And he was just like, well, I was hoping you would interview me about my acting. And I was like, you're here because you have this giant dick, dude. And just pull it out. And then he pulled it out and he swung it and he hit Adam. Adam, the toilet boy, the was, was there and he hit him yeah. in the arm. And Adam's like, ah! Like, it was fucking horrifying. And he's oh, like, God. I haven't showered today. It might be kind of, he was like warning us about the smell. Yeah. It was just oh, creepy, nice. everything about it. Nice. And I guess he couldn't really Creep have up. sex with women or it's men. Too big, right? Too big. Yeah, too yeah. big. And and he's just consumed with it. His whole life was consumed right. with like yeah. either, right. you know showing or hiding his cock. You, gotta, you should get Sean. You got to do a show again. Like where are they now? For the yeah. Oh my god! Right. That's, That'd he's be been amazing. on the Stern show constantly. Like when the Stern does like a bachelor party for George the Deca- 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 yeah. Deca- Deca- yeah. Deca- Jonah is who they bring in. As Oh my and God. he's just as weird on the Stern show. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, it's fucking, it's hysterical. That's fucking funny. Now, fucking the Mangina guy. So, did he? Was he in a wheelchair? Like, how did he get around? Nah, he he just. He, so he had like he a, probably he wore a, a fake leg like that he could just pull yeah, yeah, off. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. No, no. I, now you reminded me because <laughs> I, we had him on. I was unbeknownst to me that he had one leg, and this was part of his thing. We had him on because he was the mangina guy wearing these plastic vaginas, and we're like, all right, let's interview this weirdo about his plastic vagina <laughs> fetish because he would show up at our parties, like just stand there with like you're like, what's up with this guy? Right. right. So he's just like a normal guy that's talking about his weird. Mangina fetish, and then he's like, "Oh, and by the way, and he boom, 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 pulls like yeah. pulls his leg yeah. off, and he has a stump." And I'm like, "Ah!" <laughs> like totally, like what the fuck? And then he and then he goes on to say how he, you know, ha- like that's part of his thing. He yeah. tries to find. You know, so question, guess, what kind of parties were these that you were involved in that uh, were bringing these people You know out? what's weird? It was just for a while I was doing these weird... I did this one party called Trailer Park. It was kind of my first... I used to promote... Par- when I first moved to the city, I was. that's how I started working at Pandora's Box. And it, I joined the Toilet Boys and then Miss Guy... The amazing singer, the Toilet Boys, was like a DJ and like uh, do, working at Squeezebox. So I got all these jobs, like doing um, like go go dancing at gay bars right. and, and parties. And well, you are like nine feet tall. I could see how that would yeah, work out. You know what, man? Amazingly, like, <laughs> I, I moved out of Delaware. Like I, it was like I was involved with all this weird drug shit, and I was like, I can't sell drugs. Yeah, and, yeah, you gotta know, get out I of just that. Came to these villages. Better like, to go go dance. Yeah. yeah so I was yeah. like, you know what? Here, like gay for pay is like it's a whole. It's fine. It's actually right. a thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> just whatever, man. They, they, there's a lot of opportunities and, and um, squeeze box at that. Time. I don't know if you remember if you ever went there or like squeeze box. No, it was uh Don Hills and, and, and that party was like the eye of the hurricane. Yeah, as I remember as, it, but I never had gone. Yeah, it was yeah. it was cool. It was like so there was a lot of opportunity to get involved with all kinds of weird shit. So yeah. I was go go dancing. There's show, in it. the 90s. There sure was a lot of weird shit yeah. to get involved in. Yeah, there in really New York, was. It was the last the gas. vault was still the, open. The and, yeah, I took I took like so I was selling speed bef- in Delaware before I moved up here. Right. So me and uh, my girlfriend at the time in Delaware got all whacked out. Like one night we drove up, we got, like went to the vault. We drove up just to come just to, to, the, go to vault. the vault. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> fucking Never Christ. Had, that we're kids from Delaware. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, we're like, oh, we're yeah, like, yeah. Seen shit like that before. So we go up there and like we walk in and it's creepy as fuck. Like it was all just dudes and like a couple girls that were paid to be there, you know? <laughs> And so we're like, ah, oh, fuck! Like we we're gonna stay at the St. Mark's Hotel, which is also creepy as fuck at the time. Oh, uh, it still is. Yeah, yeah. yeah I still. think they still do hourly there, which is really yeah, I heard rare. it got an upgrade, but 
that's fucking yeah. I, I saw at the St. Mark's Hotel I heard this I heard this hooker going come on are we doing this or not come on motherfucker <laughs> and I looked out my door and it was a dude with no legs trying to push himself up the steps and like actually <laughs> screaming at him to get into oh the room I also dark, dark. I also yeah. had another time where I got my room key I go to my room and I there's, put there's the someone key, in there I open it there's a giant fat guy laying on the bed naked and he just goes <laughs> oh and I close the door and I open the door next to it the same key same open key. the door and I was oh, like no. I guess we'll stay in this room <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking horrifying. So awesome. at, the, at the vault, we we walk into the vault and we're looking around. It's a creep. There's this like this giant black dude in a cage with like the, a monster dick just yeah. like jerking himself off. It was right. awful. And 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 so we're like, well, we came all the way here. We're like, eh. and so I pushed her down. On, yeah, I pushed her down on like a thing. I kind of like you know start going down on her, and I look up and there's all these. There's like. Two, 20 dudes around us and I'm just like what the fuck is happening right now like they swarmed on yeah. us and she's like what is happening and I'm like Ugh. and and so we quickly finished that scene up and, and she's like what do you want to do I'm like let's get the fuck out yeah. of here yeah. and that was like it was it was like wow we used, to, we used to go there sometimes to like troll for slaves to just get business yeah you, you might, know? I, I, it, it was seems, a good way to get business it seems like if a girl walked in there it would you could have named your price yeah. like you know, what yeah. do you want to do pretty like, much yeah. yeah pretty much and so like by working at go go dance at squeeze box and all that stuff you start to get all the you know weird opportunities like you know like oh can i smell your armpit for 40 dollars yeah. you're like right. sure, sure. Weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sounds great <laughs> whiff it up bro yeah. like whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then of course it was dating like like uh, you know got got mixed up with the wrong crowd and start dating dominatrixes. Of course. So next thing is like, oh, do you want to make five hundred bucks? Just come to this, you know. And yeah. I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? And next thing you know, there's some like six foot nine in heels, four hundred pound lawyer like. Like, can I eat your brown mistress? And I'm like, what is happening right now? What is, I'm in some yeah. like horror movie. I'm in the yeah. fucking, you know, like, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, there's some weird shit that went Especially down. Especially if you're willing to take a crap on someone because not everybody is. And I definitely was oh okay God. with that. Yeah, you were okay with always taking a crap. Okay, always. <laughs> I, at Pandora's, especially, they would come in the room and they would be like, so anybody down for a brown shower? And I'd be like, get me a cup of coffee, give me a half an hour. I'm ready to fucking go. Everyone would be like, that's so disgusting and I'd be like you just fucked some dude up the ass with the, with the fake dick and then had to clean it in yeah, my yeah, opinion yeah. that's more disgusting I still than know. me taking a shit on some guy's chest oh my god <laughs> I still never forget the hot dog story with you was oh the yeah 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 ones. we had this guy that used to come into Pandora's box and he would come with all of these hot dogs and 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 uh not bratwurst. What's the one that's a little bigger than a hot dog? Kibasa? No. Oh my God. God damn, I can't remember. But anyway, he would come with all this, and he would get on the table. We go in the medical room because it was all rubber in there, and he would get on the table, and the girls, he pick his girl. Now I never had a session with him, but he would pay anyone a hundred dollars just to come in and watch for ten minutes. Mm-hmm. So I would always want to do that because that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I think it scarred me for fucking life because this fat guy holding his legs behind his ears while the mistress shoves hot dogs up his ass and he's snorting so much rush. Oh it would be God. like endless rush <laughs> snorting. And then he would go in the bathroom and shit all the hot dogs out. Oh. And then he would come back for more and it would go on forever until he ran out of fucking rush. Oh. <laughs> and there would be bits oh. of broken hot dogs that fell out of his ass all over the floor. Just totally out of fucking control. I mean, the- I am writing a book. You <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, that, that's the experience. There's a couple things I I, I took from it afterwards. Where <laughs> or you're like, like that you can't leave. Yeah, yeah. The, there's yes, there's some very dark shit <laughs> yeah. that takes years to get over. But <laughs> there's there's also like there's also like you walk in a room with like say anybody of authority or power, like a lawyer, or a judge, or something. I ha- I have a different relationship to anyone now. Like that's that's on some kind of pedestal where I'm like. I've seen you. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. Seen I've seen you on you your knees. Fucking pissed yeah. on, yeah, you know, you definitely. weirdo. <laughs> I definitely you know, pissed on them. Maybe not that guy, yeah. but like, don't yeah. even pull it, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know when we opened the first Lucky 13, we didn't have any money and we needed legal services. So our real estate lawyer was actually a guy I met through um, a dungeon. 
There and you go. and he did <laughs> feet get foot worship. Yeah. He worshipped my feet and did all of our legal there you shit. Go, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so, it worked out good. We got fucking legal shit done. We got. Our and I was cleans. I was with Jeff at the time, and I'm like, you don't mind if this guy like sucks on massages my feet and shit. He was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's gonna save us a thousand dollars. And I yeah. will say my experience with the 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 like other people working at the place. There seemed to be two categories where it was like like damaged fucked up people that that's that, that that's it that's yeah, like that's, it. That's, yeah. that's your baseline yeah. and then people that are like okay like i'm this is easy money until i'm like as i'm working on some other yeah, you know for sure yeah. life and so you know it was weird but i i, definitely, I mean but that those of us that were taking the easy money to work on something later are also damaged so of course it would be impossible yeah, to do be, that if you were of not course. yeah <laughs> of course but yeah yeah but there's like uh there's levels there's levels yeah. and and uh yeah I, de- I had a final i had a final situation where i was like i'm done i'm out that that effect like it, it stuck with me throughout like my personal uh yeah. sex life yeah and i was just like no like it, the image was burned in my yeah. in my head it I was had basically a, I had a, a dude a... that was like burned over like nine he had sc- burn scars on like 90 percent of his body uh i wanted like, more to be burned freddy krueger shit yeah. like I, I yeah like without brutal yeah yeah <laughs> just, wow. the, the, so he so what was so what would happen he just wanted to be burned more like what was oh his, he didn't no. want to be Burmore. What was his thing? Super nice guy, but just the visual of it. It was like, right, 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 you know, right. like too much. Yeah. And 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 number one, I'm not a gay. I'm not gay. <laughs> right. right, right, right. So you that, that I mean? makes it so even worse. Like, and and so but when you're a male dom or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, you're just there like you you fucking you know, like you're just abusing like whips, whatever like you you're just beating the fuck out of somebody. Right, so right, but it's right, right. that you know, at a certain point in your psyche, you're just like Fuck, man! This is some like <laughs> horror movie yeah, shit that I, it I'm, is, I'm a part of right yeah. now. That yeah. like I can't shake when I'm having, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of yeah. like, you know, it's dark. It's dark. It's. I had it a is. Jew that used to make me like walk around and pretend I was in the SS and goose step around and tell him I was going to put him in the oven. And that's fucking like hot. that's dark. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking dark, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I remember that uh, when I would be there was a call me a filthy Jew. That's <laughs> fucking crazy, man. <laughs> But, but we, we there was like that bullpen. Like for a while, I, w- I would actually like I I would live there for like I was like <laughs> yeah. I actually stayed in some of the rooms for a couple weeks when I was in, in between places. That's weird too, man. Because they have a weird vibe to them just because of all the weird. shit that goes on. That Asian wow, room was totally beautiful weird. though. Yeah, but, to, but, but, but like that room, it was like two, three floors or something. There was it moved at times. So at one point it was a couple floors. At one point it was all on one floor, and then they had paddles, which was on the other floor. Paddles. You know? yeah. Yes. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was there was a. It was beautiful. Like, it was as really as beautiful. Being a homeless it was dude the prettiest. York, was it like, might have been the awesome. prettiest yeah. um, dungeon. I never was. I never was in it might have been the prettiest dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really nice. beautifully done. The, the guy that owned it was a scumbag. That's that. That's basically like I realized pretty quickly. Like I started out working there because I did. I did a erotic comic. He was paying me per page. It was amazing because my first, like, I was like, fuck, I'm getting paid to make this. I made it up, you know. I still remember it was like Delta City. Like, I still have it. This total erotic, <laughs> like, uh, it can, was like. Can we republish that? Dude, it's never let's, been published. Let's I'll tell do you. it. So I drew the whole fucking thing. Uh, you know, it had this whole storyline, this, like, gang of S&M doms that ruled this city. And uh, so he loved it, whatever. And next thing, he used to publish Black and Blue magazine. Right. Right. Of and, course. And so I come in, you know, the new magazine comes out and there's a picture of the toilet boys on the back of it. And it says playing black and blue fetish ball. It's something. So and I was like, dude, you never asked us. Like, <laughs> I was like, you, I, I didn't ask the singer, the drummer. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not yeah, the yeah. guy running the band. And he's like, well, you got to play. I'm your boss. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, no, you don't understand. I was like, we can't play this. It's not, you know. And he's like, fuck you. You're playing. I'm not publishing your stupid. And I was like. Wow. You've already paid, paid me, me for, for this, yeah. like, and that kind of ended my tenure yeah. of living there. And right. like, you know, like I would still do weird <laughs> sessions, but wow, that sucks. And then he had well, maybe weird... not. Sometimes it's good to. He was like, you know, I just got scumbag vibe for, and his oh, wife was a total we- like his wife was a dom there, um, right, right. Raven or whatever. So and much weird shit yeah, going on. Yeah, it was like a to- it was drama, constant yeah. drama. I mean, of but, course, it's going to be drama yeah. in that kind of place. Yeah, definitely in that environment, I can imagine there was tons of drama. I mean, shit, I only worked with the one for a little while, and I like 
there was always drama. Of you know course what I mean? there like, is. Yeah. It's over the top. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Over the top. They used to shoot porn upstairs too. Like At the place you were? At the place I was too, yeah. They, I, they were actually putting in these weird offices. Like I had to like build a stage up there and then like they were putting in these weird office scenes where like shit was going on. Ca- in casting there. couch? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. casting That's couch. Fun. Making yeah. sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> making porn yeah, sets. Making porn we, set. Jeff didn't know that was on his resume. Yeah. Yeah. Porn awesome. set builder. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it, man. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> exactly, man. I was like, fucking whatever, man. It was cool. So how can we get the well. Toilet Boys to play here sometime? <sighs> it would be easy for me. Are you? To, uh, Since yeah. you're here. Let's make walk. it on a Thursday so you can just roll in the back. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. But it's funny. We uh, we played a couple like, um, like a couple years ago at... Uh, at uh, St. Vitus, right, we did yeah. two gigs in one night, and it was like the coldest night in recorded history. Was it, it? Li- literally, what, like, yeah, it was. Li- it was literally like I woke up and I'm like, "What do you say?" Like, I wouldn't have gone to this gig <laughs> right, if I didn't right, have yeah. to play. I would yeah. have bought tickets and, and just not been like, gone. "I'm not yeah. going." Yeah. Like, it was the newscasters were like, "It's the cold. It's the coldest night in- <laughs> that's ever been recorded." <laughs> I'm like, "Of course it is," you know. And we played twice that night, which was weird, and you know. That's what they have to do over there, though. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I, I don't know. I mean, we should do that when we have a bigger band. What, do, what, two, two gigs two, in a night? Yeah. yeah. Well, it comes down to the band. Cause me, personally, like, we sold out one thing. Right. And the got, uh, other guys in the band were like, let's do another right. night. And I was like, well, the second night? And they're like, that's not available. Right. And I said, well, dude, we didn't really do this when we were in our 20s. Like, right, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. I, I, that's I, a lot. That's it is rough, a lot. man. Like, I wouldn't want to do two shows in we one night. Played I'd be in fucking years. dying. <laughs> they do yeah. that. They do that a lot there. Yeah, though. I'd be fucking dying. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, by the second part, we were just like, fuck it, and just had a blast. The first one was a little rough, and it was weird, but whatever. It, it, uh, yeah, it's funny. Like, uh, our drummer plays in Psyche TV, and so uh-huh. they've been real busy and, yeah. like, you know, you still doing much music at all? Nah, nah. Like, just that. And, um, yeah. you know, like, I just record. I, I record at home constant shit and just throw it up and do right. weird shit with it. But what is what do you do most? Of, like, what do you do with your every day? I do. I'm a motion graphics guy. Like, I do. Uh, For what kind of company? Like, I, I'm, I, I do. <clears throat> I'm a freelance animator that does stuff for, like, mo- movie titles and okay. stuff like that. So since, you know. Do you do it from home? Yeah. Good. So basically, like, I was working at a gay sex club, right? I was uh, the door guy at this gay sex club on Houston Street. Still, still, like, Toilet Boys had stopped, and I was playing with uh, my wife, Theo, and Theo and the Skyscrapers. And, you know, we were still... Here's my last gig, real gig, playing music, was uh, Theo and the Skyscrapers. We did it, put out a couple albums and did this doomed tour right we go out on tour and like hit a deer we dropped our transmission in salt lake like one of the promoters got a migraine a bridge in minneapolis like you couldn't it was literally like like it was just like what is happening right now you know and our last gig lady gaga opened for us at like the oh my god it was right before she blew up so it was kind of like we were just like, that was fucking shit. And then you watch this girl that literally sucked so bad. Yeah. Like she had a DJ playing her backup track and she would start dancing and the record would skip <laughs> and she would stop. And I was like, what is this? Yeah. What is happening right now? You know? And like, uh, and like after we played, I'm in our, in our uh, backstage in the little band room and she comes in and throws a disco ball at me in a bikini. And I was like, <laughs> I got to get out of this. Like, it was just weird. Like, you know. Like, I shouldn't be alone with this 18-year-old chick in a bikini. <laughs> like, you guys are great. And, I was just, and then to see her in six months turn into yeah, that, I'm like, blow up. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I was like, fuck this. The music industry's fucked. Like, well, you it know, is fucked. It's yeah. fucked. So, and even people we know that, like, are out there, like, trying to raise a family as a working musician, it's, I, you know, we have a kid now. I'm very happy to... Um, be doing something else that I get get off on. It's cool um, because, like I said, I'm working at this like gay sex club. I'm t- literally like. What was it called? It was called uh, El Mirage. It was on House. You would never know it. You're walking down House Street. There's a door. One of those that you don't yes. see. Yeah. And so it was so funny because I'd be standing at that door, looking down House Street, and you could see it from three blocks away. You'd see a guy like with this weird, funny walk, like this weird butt walk. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this motherfucker's yeah. coming here, like they're doing kegels, walking up the fucking street <laughs> and shit, yeah. with like a little duffel bag. <laughs> So, like, they'd come in, and I'd be like, are you a cop? Are you DA? And they're like, 
uh, no, no. And I'm like, all right, pull out your dick. You know, and they're like, oh, my God, you have the best job in the world. I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> like, fuck you. I did, like, but, you know, so that's because it's, you know, it's like you got to be a member of this club to get in. So why the, do you have to check the dick for those at home? To make sure they're not a cop. Make for sure they're not home. a cop. Like yeah. if they had, if they had a, a cop member, would uh, not take his penis out. Yeah, every once in a while, a co- like a cop would be like, I'm a cop, but. I'm just here to play. And, right. And then if, because it's a membership, like they, they skirted the law by it being a members club. Right, right. I went to a, a couple of lesbian sex parties and one of them was at a club that was a male gay sex club most of the time. That was it, probably. And it was, it was I think it was a little more east like where um meow mix used to be. Yeah, that's like where over it was. there, really? Yeah. Okay, so. And, and inside was like they had like. <laughs> It made me want to be gay. Like, I'm f- so jealous like of these fucking guys. And yes. all this cool shit. <laughs> yes, yeah. dude, you walk in this place, and from this front, it's a door, right? And then where I worked, there was just like a room, like it was like a little room, and then they take your thing or whatever. But you go inside, there's like, yeah, like swings. There's it's like all kinds of cool shit in it's there. Like a, it's like a playground you see for little kids outside, right? And, right, and, right, right. and there's like a room full, like a um, uh, glory hole room. Right, where there's, it's a just glory there's, there's a wet, there's downstairs, there's a wet room yes. with drains in the floor. Okay, so you want to hear some <laughs> fucked up stories about this place, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay. I'm glad I was, I'm glad, glad I got to see the place. Yeah, so the... <laughs> We so really, you've been there. I've been and there. I've always been like angle because when I took the job, the guy that got me the job's like, just don't tell him you're not gay. And I'm like, whatever. I'm in the toilet boy. Whatever. Who like cares? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Whatever. But but it was you know like like okay, I got a, a wife or girl. I forget if we were married at the, at the time, but I didn't mention it, and then no one asked, so they just assumed. So I just sit there, mind my business, make my money. It was good money. So. uh like there's this guy surfer dave right and i have a lot of shitty stories that revolve around this guy he's like one of those scumbag dudes that like i love him but he's like a fucking scumbag and i happen it's to be like jeff I, yeah well, yeah it's just like jeff yeah. so i happen to be at the, up. i happen to be at the door like I just said i love you yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. I just ate a burrito. I'm tired. And it's like, it's golden shower night at the old El Mirage. <laughs> right, of course. And, and I'm standing there and Surfer, who comes walking down House Street, Surfer Dave, he's like, yo, Sean, what's up, man? Dude, you want a bump? And I'm like, okay. And I should know that, of course, Surfer Dave has some, like, <laughs> shitty coke. Shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, squashed with fucking, like... Rat uh, poison. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 uh, shit immediately. Yes. And so uh, I do, like, the tiniest little bump to give me a little lift for the night. And within, like, 15 minutes, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, right? <laughs> fucking just rumble, rumble, rumble. And I have to run through the hallway of dicks because to get to the bathroom <laughs> yeah. there's this like tight hallway where like five dudes are around this one dude <laughs> and literally I'm going sideways through a hallway of dicks with hit- dicks hitting my thing and then I walk into the bathroom to take like this massive burrito coke, coke dump, dump. <laughs> and there's, it's just covered with fucking Come. piss oh, no piss. it's like cause it's golden shower night oh, I just was like no and I, tur- and I just ran out the- I ran out of the club and like my boss was like where are you going I'm like I'm out I'm going <laughs> and they were like, what happened to you? You know, And, uh, yeah, the, and I was always angling oh to try to God. work, like, the lesbian yeah, night thing. Yeah, like, I was no. kind of like, yeah, you got a door guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no men allowed. They had a clothing check at the front, so. Yeah, it was no funny. I was like, you sure? I mean, you know, but, um, yeah, that place, it made me, like, really jealous, these gay dudes' sex life. Because it would be everybody from, like, ugly weirdos to, like, really hot model yeah, dudes. Yeah, it was out of control, like, the... The part, the lesbian parties that I went to, like incredible range of people, just yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 so I could imagine with guys, it's even more a more of a range. Yeah, it was a, it was pr- impressive range, and it made me. And they just go for it; they're crazy as fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like God damn. Yeah, you know, it was a weird place, man. But basically, I'm working there for a while, and hit the wall like i was like i gotta get out of this fucking life like you know what i mean like yeah. the music oh, business yeah. sucks yeah, and i'm like yeah. i gotta stop with all this the bull- sex shit yeah like yeah. all these weird gigs man like you know so um that's what, like I, I took on this like basically taught myself through youtube tutorials how to do animation shit and, awesome you know just got into it so i've been doing that for I don't know, like 10 years. Yeah. At some point, you have to leave all that yeah. shit. Like, I was a stripper. Then I was a dominatrix. Where did you strip at? Um, Paradise Club first. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm. It's, that was uh, on the west side, right? It's by the Paradise? Empire State Building. It's now Rick's Cabaret. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I started there as a cocktail waitress, and the management kept saying, like, you're way too hot to be a cocktail waitress. Do you want to make 100 bucks, or do you want to make 800 bucks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> Yo, Paradise, Paradise Club, and I tried to get a job there when I first moved to New York. They were looking for a fucking handyman. Oh, my God. And I was, God. like, 24 years old. I would have met you old. sooner. Dude, I was 20. Are you kidding me? Dude, I was, like, 24 years old. I went in there, and I, I you know, I just thought it was It was Paradise nude. Club. It was all nude. And, and I just, Which, I just yeah, thought it was, it was Paradise Club. And I went there and I was like, oh my God, it's a strip club? Dude, I like prayed to get that job. Of course you did. I was like, please, <laughs> give me this job. Yeah. I'm sure they saw me walk in like young, horny, fucking yeah, 24-year-old. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. get anything yeah. done. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. no I always... It'll be causing fucking yeah. drama. <laughs> like backstage. Yeah. Exactly. So my first strip job was all nude. I went directly to here's my pussy. So it feel, I feel like every, but every other chick from the rock scene oh, did Billy's topless was there. Yes, I did that not was... work at Billy's <laughs> yeah. topless. Yes. It's like everybody else like, oh, I worked True. at Billy's tops. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to sit and then I went hours. to Flesh Dancers for a little while, and then I worked at this place called Runway 69 for like five minutes. But I, I fucking that hated too. it. Yeah, because they, I, I didn't, I wouldn't do. They didn't have lap dancing or anything like that at Paradise. So I went to Runway 69. I was like, I can't fucking do that. I hate men. I can't put my pussy near a penis. I'm gonna fucking vomit. Yeah. So I could, I couldn't do it. So then I worked in peep show booths because I didn't Were have to there? fucking so in do. Like I didn't have to touch anybody. 94. Yes, when they changed the laws. So I, Power Station. There's this, the recording studio, Power Station, like 53rd Street, right over there. Yeah. Um, and I'm in this band, Black Light Rainbow from Delaware, right? And uh, that's how I was dealing speed. Like, the guy that was mad and just was the, the dude. Anyway, he paid for us to be at Power Station, um, basically paid for a production deal with the owner of Power Station, right? And the dude was like, yeah, yeah, these guys can record in Studio B. They can live in the um, uh, the lounge. <laughs> uh-huh. So for a summer, we stayed in the lounge. We're from Delaware, but we stayed in the lounge. And ACDC is downstairs, and, and Nine Inch Nails was doing the downward spi- spiral. Craig Mack recorded the song Flavor in Your Ear. Right. Like, all while we were there, like, right. Bad Boy was there. But every night, all we did was go to the peep shows. Right. And it was right around, like, and right we used there. to, like... Dude, it was like there was like all these relationships starting with like weird. You just be in the peep show like, hey, well, we're just hanging out. Like, and yeah. it was so fucking. It was yeah. awesome to witness that. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, were you at, with that upstairs one? I worked at the Show Follies. Yeah, I worked at the upstairs one, Show Follies, and then I worked at Show World for a little while show, as well. Show World. Yeah. yeah. Show World was the last hanger on. The of, last hanger yeah. on. Those, those peep show things were so crazy. I remember going there like the first time I came to New York. I was like eighteen. I came to New York, and of course we go right to the fucking peep shows and shit. Of yeah. And it was just weird, like, you know, I, I remember there was a one, like, you slid your fucking money in, and then this, like, you know, it was no fucking real mechanics to it. It was just the doors came sliding yeah. up. And a girl's just standing there. There was, like, this big black woman standing there. And I'm, like, just, like, what do I do? You yeah. know what I mean? Did she pull her like, dick out? No, no, no. <laughs> what happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> like, when I was, like, young, young. <laughs> I was, like, this Puerto Rican, what I thought was, hot, like, kind of hot Puerto Rican right, chick. Right, right. Get into the booth, and I'm just, like... <laughs> And it was like flop, and I just was like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> Jeff would have stayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right. I mean, well, like, but, uh, dude, yeah, it, it got was creepy, it, man. It was, it was, it was just weird because, like, and then the girls just like, you know, you're gonna give me some money if you want me to do something. Yep. I'm like, all right, you yep. know what I mean? That was just, a, it's a weird. And then, so, so, I, I, yeah, you could, did you like? It was the window and the circle ones that, that I didn't. Was, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't work worked? in the circle ones when they started that law. Is actually when I left the peep show business. What do you? Why was there a law? What do you mean? The the circle ones where you were in like the tank. They changed the law where where they kept changing the laws where okay now it has to be this much sex and this much like not sex. They right. kept changing the laws and they wanted us to dance in the tank and guys could touch you if you were in. Yeah, the tank. yeah. The whole fucking reason I went to peep show was so I could be on the other side of a piece of fucking glass. glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, I couldn't. The, I didn't the, want to be. Those touched. tags got fucking crazy. Where it's just like, like you know, they're sticking their ass right at yeah. you. Just like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> what am I? You know, like, holy shit. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't want to no, be. Thank like, you. yeah, you start going like, ah. No, thank yeah. you. And then, you know, you're I not like the thinking gl- straight. Like you're kind of like, what did I just do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking weird, man. It totally fucks you up, though, coming out of there. Like, yeah. it was a weird vibe. I definitely out liked having the glass and having the like the ability so to you, hit the a phone? dump the phone. Uh, yeah. The fucking creepy phone. I would phone. talk through the phone, and you the know, dude. I mean, to think the phones I put my mouth, mouth against. on. Yeah, yeah. They clean I mean, up pretty uh, well. Like, like doing yeah. this, you know, like. <laughs> 
fucking. I always uh, felt bad for Peter, who came all the way from Africa to mop up cum a hundred thousand yeah. times a day. He was the nice guy on earth, but he used to get so mad at me because he was like, "I don't know what you're doing in your booth, but they keep coming on the glass instead of the floor." Uh, <laughs> so he would actually have to clean the gum. He goes, "You yeah, have some magic yeah. pussy." He would be like, like, "I don't know what's going on with your pussy, <laughs> but they keep coming on the glass and not the floor, and it's so much more work for me." And I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I had this weird like so so I'm in this bit the Black Light Rainbow band right we're in Virginia right like weird like and hit like some we, we stayed at some weird truck stop that had a weird little tiny peep show thing and we're like you know we're like kids we're like yeah. I go on the peep show thing and I'm standing there and all of a sudden like this hand with the $20 <laughs> comes underneath the thing and I was just like and I stepped on the 20 <laughs> and I just was like and I put it in my pocket and I just I, I like you know I couldn't I, at that point, I, I wasn't jacking anymore. I was just sitting there all edgy, like, what right. just happened? <laughs> and then, like, I got out. There was some weird, like, creepy old dude kind of, like, in, like, the little doorway of the booth. And I, like, split so quick. <laughs> but it was so weird, man. I'm like, wow. It's that such was... a creepy industry, oh, like, the yeah. whole thing. But I liked it better than dancing because I felt like I had such control. Whereas yeah. you have no control when you're naked in front of a bunch of guys and there's no barrier. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I felt like I had to, if I don't want to do something, Thing, I'm not gonna do it. Fuck you. You can't touch me. You're like, we had a dump button. I don't care how much money you gave me. I don't like you. Oh, you did? Thing goes the, down. Oh, then, I would cool. lock, yeah. then I would lock my door because I'm like, they might come and try to yeah. kill me now. You know? Oh, it's so funny, man. Quite, uh, the, quite the industry. Such a weird industry. It is pretty weird, but. Yeah. So and then I and then I went back to bartending. I had originally bartended. After that, I went back to yeah. bar, bartending at strip clubs. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I started at Limelight. It was my first bartending job. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I I I was there right at the end of Limelight. Like I was doing a party, and so so we, we had. I was there this, in like ninety two. Oh, ninety two. Yeah. So you were you were there before the gay like the weird yeah. everything got fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there before. I was there that's in the awesome. height of the drug madness. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. You yeah. were the best time. I was I, there. At I the don't worst do time. drugs though, so it was. It was crazy, like it was crazy. You yeah, know I'm know sure I mean? witnessing. Yeah, you know, just I, I I went there like as a little kid when I came to New York, but when I started working there was uh, it was after everything. It was end of the '90s, and like we we had done a party at this club, Life, right? Steve Lewis, this nightlife dude, it, it shut down, moved it to the limelight, and. Peter Gation, like the guy that ran, yep. ran it, was yeah. in all this trouble. He talked all this good game, like, oh, we really want your party, your blah, blah, So we booked. Was like, that we had, when he was, like, really in trouble? Like, he had been arrested? He had already, and... all the shit had gone down, okay. and, yeah. and the limelight had this last gasp of shit. Yeah. Yeah. So we had, like, Motorhead, we had Super Suckers, Luna Chicks, Toilet Boys had played, like, E-Town Concrete. Like, yeah. we had this weird run of, like, cool shows, and then we did Fishbone, right? It was packed. Right, Fishbone, and it was me and this chick Dana who who d- actually booked Fishbone, and she started drinking wine early, right? Because it was a fun <laughs> night. It was like a packed show. We're like, fuck yeah! And then we had Motorhead like the next week or something. And uh, at, I remember sometime during the night, this little tiny dude in a suit rolls up, and I'm like talking to the door guy. I'm like, okay, we got to get you know at, like twelve thousand for Fishbone, or you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, where yeah. I was like trying to deal with shit. This guy walks up and he goes. Nobody's getting shit. Nobody's getting paid. The band's not getting paid. You're not getting paid. Nobody's getting paid. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what the fuck's going I was on? Like, and something about this guy scared. To, like, I've never been so freaked out. Like, I'm a big, you know, I can handle my business. Yeah. But this dude was like, something about his vibe freaked me out so bad. And uh, yeah, so he just screamed some shit at whoever was dealing with the money. Took a bunch of money. I watched him walk out with it, wow. and then and then Dana, the chick that booked Fishbone, was like wasted by that time, and she's like, "I can't tell Fishbone <laughs> that they're not getting paid," wow. and so like she's crying to me, like literally crying, and I'm like, "Fuck!" Like I gotta tell because fish, those are big. Yeah. Some of them are big dudes. Yeah. Right? It's like, like twelve <laughs> like black dudes from LA, and I'm like. <laughs> You know, they had just played, and it was packed. It, was, it wasn't like I couldn't go, like, hey, yeah, you didn't, didn't make didn't enough, make enough money. money, yeah. And I had to go, I was like, uh, I'm, like, literally shaking, like, guys, I, I can't, you can't, you're not going to get paid. And they're like, what? And you just, like, people went, fuck, it was like World Star. Wow. I was like, so what is happening right now, motherfuckers? Like, what? Uh, and I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, sue them. Get a lawyer. I don't know. Like, it was 
uh, it was fucking awful. Brutal. So basically, oh, man. Yeah, and I think that was like the last real yeah. anything that I remember happening at Limelight. And then it became like a store or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like a mall. Yeah, it became a mall for it's a, a while. It's still a mall. They just opened a David Barton in there. There's yeah. a fucking gym now. It's really sad because it was such a cool spot. So cool. It was such a cool spot. But someone was like, like so cursed about it. Like you had that vibe of like the church and then you yeah. knew about the, the mur- like party monster murder yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, so it, by had the time- its, it had its run though. And like he was just grimy and like, yeah, uh, he was grimy. Into the fucking I was, ground. I'm happy because when I was in a band, I actually got to play there. So that was nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 There and what CDs. band were you in? Um, Unto Ashes. It was um, like a, like a. I want to say apocalyptic folk, medieval goth kind of It was like goth thing, stuff. You know? Oh, cool. Yeah, it was yeah. like goth stuff. And that's a good place for like goth that was, night. Yeah, the it was goth, cool. You know? It was cool. And you opened the, I saw you play there. Who, yeah. I forget who I you opened up for, now. but it was like a good uh, Yeah, we played a, a couple big shit. big shows, which was nice. Back that's home. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I got to play the places that mattered. So yeah, I yeah. Like, all right, I'm good. You I know. know, New York, so like the it's Lucky 13 is the only place that it matters to me. We love St. Vitus too. We do. We love St. Vitus. That's the only reason that like the Tulip Boys got offered a gig there. I was like, oh, I love that place. Yeah, yeah let's play. play. Just, you so know, you got to play great, here sometime. Tell me you'll talk to the band about playing here sometime. Sure. I'd love to have you guys here. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's Bands are weird, man. Bands <laughs> are weird. That's why I'm like, just talk to them and see what they say. Yeah, they are. They it's might be funny. like, it's like, a shithole. We don't want to play there. It's very funny. That's how, like, uh, like Black Metal, I know you're a huge, yes. you know, uh, like, my... It was after the Toilet Boys and like the music industry just being so fucked and just everything about it. Like I hated music, and the only thing that got me back into music was like black metal was so removed. Yeah, we don't want anything. Yes, yeah. it was kind of like we don't even yes, want you to like, hear our fucking music. Yeah, I would hear yeah. the Rolling Stones be like, "Fuck the who yeah. the fuck are the Rolling Stones? <laughs> yeah. what's, what's the difference? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, uh, like uh, I don't know, man. It's it's such a Weird. I was trying to explain that to someone the other day how a lot of black metal bands are putting stuff out just on cassette because they literally don't even want you to fucking Yeah, don't hear listen it. to me. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. I recorded like three black, like <laughs> my own black metal albums, yeah. like just listen to it on my headphones. Like, no, nah, I'm not going to put it out. <laughs> but that's what that's people how cold do. And icy yeah. this right? shit my is. husband yeah. has tons and tons of music that he doesn't put anywhere. Yeah. I'm like, you work for hours and hours and hours on this shit. What are you doing? Put it out it's somewhere. It's for them, though, which is respectable. So you know what weird. I mean? so. Yeah. It's a black metal. That's the black metal uh, approach. Good. Yeah. We're going to have to wrap it up. Yeah, we do. I know you got to go to work. Yeah. It's Sean's birthday also. It's Woo! Sean's birthday. <laughs> what are you doing tonight for the old birthday? I was going to come here. To yeah. <laughs> see cool. the goat. The to guy, see the go-go go-go guys. guys. <laughs> go. Going to do a dick check at the door. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking sold out. It's sold out. Fucking... Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. That's gotta, funny, man. Yeah, That's hysterical. Like, this place is going to be filled with screaming, giant, tittied black chicks. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Dude, I, the, the one gig, I, I've done a couple bachelor parties when I was go-go dancing, and got, <laughs> I got like... Sexually assaulted by those like chicks were they're fucking on it, brutal. man. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they're oh, on my. it. They are. They don't give a fuck. Give I have so much respect for them. For the next episode, yeah, yes, Sean, yes. you're gonna have to come back. This yeah, because we, we could go fucking, off for yeah, three totally hours. Probably, going. we have so much, and we've been to so many of the same places. There's even more to unearth. Creeps. Yeah. Even more to unearth, because God knows what else we both have seen together. Bunch of creeps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucked up. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to have to call this the sex pot, the sex issue. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got to wrap this up. Melvin's got to go to work. So we'll talk to you guys. I got to go teach him yoga after all that talk about taking a shit on guys' chests. <laughs> <laughs> Work that for, into a pose. For $300. There's got to be a pose There's in that. There's got to be a pose in that. There's definitely a pose <laughs> in that. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, black metal yoga That's chest black metal yeah. yoga Sorry, chest shitter. I just shitter. stood up to do uh, the He pose. just stood right. up to show us his All version right. of chest shitter. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Teaching black metal yoga here next week. I'll have to throw that into <laughs> class. All right, Sean. Thank you. Thank well, you well, so much yeah. for coming on. Happy birthday. Yeah, man. Well, we're going to have to get you back on. This is fucking awesome. All right. We'll talk to you guys next Later. week. Later. Later.